Honorable Rabbi David Lau, Chief Rabbi of the State of Israel, distinguished participants of the International Conference Religions, Human Solidarity, and Global Peace, Building a Better Future. Dear guests, today's teachings give us an advice. Torshim Bishlom When entering a venue, first thing we should do is greet the venue or perhaps the host. Yet we may understand this in a different way. The first thing to do is praise the hosting institution. The Paris Academic Center is one of the of several institutions of higher education and one of the youngest. Yet in the short period of its existence, the center evolved as one of the leading in this field. This was made possible thanks to two people. The late president of the State of Israel, who taught who through his vision and guidance, the future of this institution evolved, and the founder of the center of Railul, who turned Paris' dream into a reality. The two main visions of President Paris that signify the unique character of this institution is that higher education is a basic human right in the 21st century. The other maxim is one who doesn't dream is not a realistic person. I hope that even during your short visit, you will be able to grasp the uniqueness of this institution with which you will be become more familiar in your future visits, which I, we are looking forward to. Our conference deals with a tragic reality. The tenets of our conference, peace, human solidarity, and the striving for a better future undermine most religions. Nevertheless, religion was and still is the source of some of the worst atrocities of human beings. The project which we launch today is meant to reveal the common visions of the different religions and enlist them to utilize a better world. I have the pleasure of welcoming the four institutions that are gathered to ensure a successful conference. First, my own, the Paris Academic Center, the Hebrew University Law School, the International Religious Liberty Association, and the International Association for the Defense of Religious Liberty. May I call upon the center's rector, my dear friend, Professor Ron Shapira, to welcome the participants on behalf of the hosting institution. Thank you. Rabbi uh, David Lau, the Chief Rabbi of Israel, uh, our keynote speaker, uh, distinguished guests, Professor Asher Maoz, uh, former and founding dean of our uh, uh, law school, uh, dean uh, uh, of uh, the first 10 years of this uh, law school, uh, dear organizers, uh, uh, dear participants. We're very happy to host together uh, with the Hebrew University this conference, which seems to be especially important this year when religions are repeatedly cited as a cause for antagonism and violence, as, as Asher mentioned. Uh, the Paris Academic Center is named after the late Shimon Peres, uh, the ninth president of the United, uh, of uh, the State of Israel. I'm sorry. Uh, regardless of any practical political solution, some of which may be in controversy, President Peres was certainly one of the great promoters of tolerance among nations and religions, and so I consider an institution bearing his name an appropriate venue for this conference. Uh, Jerusalem and Temple Mount, which we call Harabait, and the Muslims call Al Haram al Sharif, the sacred site, is now again a source of dispute, even this week. This is a good time to remind us all of the Muslim Jewish long standing alliance in regard to Jerusalem. As you know, according to most halakhic views, Jews don't consider Islam as a uh, 
idolatry or, 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 or paganism. Uh, there's details, explicit explanation of this in a famous response in uh, Maimonides, Shiba, not in the full cemetery of Rambam. Uh, in the Middle Ages, when religion was truly a source of bloodshed, the tolerance of Muslims to Jews was indeed a ray of hope. Let me just read a few lines in Hebrew from the book of Tachemoni, written by the Jewish poet and author Yudal Harizi, celebrating the conquest of Jerusalem by Salah Adin in 1189, which is Daled Taf Taf Kof, according to the Jewish calendar, and also celebrating the consequent return of Jews to the city of Jerusalem. And I read from Al-Harizi. Vayayr Hashem et Ruach Melech Yishmaelim Ve-Arbaat Alafim Utshamot Vachamishim Laitzira Ve-Nach Alav Ruach Eitza Ugvura Ve-Eitzav Lahavir Kol Bechol Ir El Kol Rav Vetzair Leimor Daberu Alev Yerushalayim לבוא אליה כל הרוצה מזרע אפרים, אשר יישאר מאשור וממצרים, והנידחים מקצה השמיים, ויתקבצו מכל פאה אליה, וחנו בגבוליה, ואנחנו עתה יושבים בצל השלווה הנמתקת, אם לא תהיה נעתקת וניתקת. These words are implied reference to the book of Ezra, and Salah Adin is compared here to the Persian king Cyrus, Koresh in Hebrew. who allowed the return of Zion 2,600 years ago. We should all hope that this tolerant spirit of Salah ad-Din would prevail in Jerusalem and elsewhere, and that religions would inspire solidarity and kindness rather than hatred. Welcome to the Paris Academic Center, and I look forward to hearing the interesting presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ron. Now may I call upon another dear friend, Dr. Ganun Diop, Secretary General of the International Religious Liberty Association, to welcome the participants on behalf of the organizing committee and present the opening remarks. Thank you very much, Professor Asher Maoz, Honorable Chief Rabbi of Israel, Uh, distinguished dignitaries here present, precious guests and participants through social media. In the name of all the organizers of this illustrious conference, um, the Perez Academic Center, Hebrew University of Jerusalem, IDLR, and IRLA, we are honored and delighted to welcome you. The title for this academic conference could not be more timely. Religions, human solidarity, and global peace. These three. The centerpiece, the centerpiece, human solidarity, defines what it means to be human and humane. The first, religions, as intimated by its etymology, religare, is about binding. Actually, the root lig is found in the word ligament, talking about binding. What is it that binds us together as human beings? This conference is going to conjugate this concept in various ways, through contributions from distinguished thought leaders, from various backgrounds and competencies. Then the third concept, global peace, probably the greatest challenge of our time. At its core, global peace is challenge because life in some regions of our world is not considered sacred. Sometimes places or so-called canonical territories are more valued than persons. Holy places, holy sites, are sometimes more valued than persons. So, violence, wars, brutality, are indulged as an acceptable norm. But it does not have to be that way. Therefore, this conference, 
bringing people of goodwill and wise insights to send a different message of togetherness, solidarity, and shalom, peace. Yes, it may seem merely aspirational, but vital though to conquer hearts and subdue impulses of death, conquest, domination, domestication, and dominions. So bringing the distinguished person you are to build peace may be the best endeavor our world urgently needs. Thank you for being here. And thank you for those who are following this event through social media. Our deep gratitude. Welcome. Thank you, Ganun. You couldn't have a more suitable person to launch this conference than Rabbi David Lau, the Chief Rabbi of Israel and President of the Great Rabbinical Court of Appeals. Rabbi Lau follows a distinguished line of religious leaders. His father, Rabbi Israel Meir Lau, is the Chief Rabbi of Tel Aviv and former Chief Rabbi of Israel. Rabbi Lau's ancestors were prominent rabbis who tragically perished during the Holocaust. On his maternal line, Rabbi Lau is the proud grandson of Rabbi Yedidia Frankel, a former chief rabbi of Tel Aviv, and a person adored by all circles of the nation. And I don't say it because Rabbi Lau is here. I, I had the luck of knowing Yedidia Frankel. No one had a bad word about him, only good words. A true marriage, Rabbi Lau became son-in-law of another distinguished rabbinical ancestry, that of the Ralbach family. The rabbi Lau himself is always first, first chief rabbi of Shoham, first chief rabbi of Modin, and when elected nine years ago, he became the youngest chief rabbi of Israel ever. I call upon Rabbi Lau to present his Good evening. First of all, I want to ask you to apologize that I don't have a lot of time because uh, I must running to be in the hospital with uh, my family. And uh, this is a time to pray for all of us to meet each other in healthy and happiness only. Uh, I didn't know that I need to speak in English. And uh, okay, I try to do it. Even that uh, if I knew that I need to speak in English, I tried to translate the letter that I want to tell you. Now I will tell it to you in Hebrew, even that Maimonides, the Rambam, wrote it in Arabic. So... But now I have it in, in, in Hebrew, and I want to continue, I want to continue the head of Rambam, Maimonides, about the connection and peace between the people, all the people in the world. But I want to share with you a short story. I remember... It was uh, 45 years ago. My father officiated night of uh, Pesach, the first night of Pesach, Lel Seder, in uh, the camp of, uh, uh, of the army. And uh, there was a lot of guests of bonds that came to this event. It was more my father without microphone, and it was around 1,300 people without microphone, and uh, he did it excellent. And uh, it was 200 people 
that came from the uh, bonds, they came from all the corners of the United States. One of them, I remember, I was a child, and I remember that for me, it, it looked me like a NBA star, because he was big, a tall man, and he introduced himself like a, a manager of the bank in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, he said that every every night before he went to go to, he went to sleep every night he read one part in Rambam Maimonides and he said that for me I'm not sure he said I'm not sure but I feel that this is so very nice wisdom for peace and and rules for for all the world all the people of a human being in the world i remember that so when professor Mauros asked me to speak about the peace and so solidarity in the here in the world i look in the letter of ronda maimonides and i want to share it with you he said he sent a letter to Rabbi Chisdai Levi from Alexandria, a Sephardi from Alexandria. Uma she'shalta al ha'umot. You ask me about the relationship between Judaism to other nations. Have you yodea the Rachmana liba bayi? You know that God ask our heart. ואחרי כוונת הלב הם הדברים. You need to understand that we are going after the meaning of the heart. If you think about good things, this is a way, and it uh, not depends if you are Jews or not. ועל כן אמרו רבותינו, חסידי אומות העולם, יש להם חלק לעולם הבא. If you are Jew or not, we, the, the God has place for you in his garden for Jews and non-Jews. ואין בדבר ספק, שכל מי שהתקין נפשו בכשרות המידות, בכשרות החוכמה, באמונת הבורא יתברך, בוודאי הוא מבני עולם הבא. He said that if you have, uh, if your behavior is very good behavior, this is a way that God loves it. I want to tell you, for example, Chazal, but no, the, the, in the Bible we can find it in Divrei Yamim. It was a war between people in Yehuda against people to uh, Israel. It was the uh, uh, kingdom of Yehuda uh, in Jerusalem and kingdom of Israel in Shomron. And it was a war and the people from Yehuda won the war and after the, the uh, won, after the war, they took the people they gave them clothes, food, water, to drink, and to wash themselves. And uh, I don't know if uh, today in uh, Ukraine people know it, but this is the relationship that we learn that we need to go according of this, of this way. You are Jew or not? Is not, but you need to remember, after war, you have a life. You need to see this, that this is a person. After the First World War, it was at the time that uh, they decided to make a, a Hedera Leumim. 
חבר הלאומים, to, if you will, an argument between uh, country to country, this is a place to speak, to discuss, maybe to... The League of Nations, yes. This is after the First World War. But after that, the Second World War, that United Nations, this is maybe they thought to be better. I hope so. But I see that, that they, they, their decision is according not to rules of uh, love and peace, but uh, if I want that you will be with me, so I will be, I, I will I be with you. So it's a uh, political, it's a uh, interesting, it, it's not things that we want to see. And maybe we need, we don't need the third world war. No, we don't need it. I'm sure that no one wants to think it. But this is a time that I want to ask, I want to pray with you. Even someone want, uh, felt that he want to, uh, someone made me anything uh, wrong thing. This is very, very hard thing. But we believe El Nekamot Hashem, El Nekamot Ophia. If someone want to, uh, someone did something wrong to me, this is not my function to do it against him. I need to pray, not to give my second uh, face that you can uh, touch me again. No, this is a time that I want to tell you a few words from my grandfather that you remind him, Rabbi Frankel, in Hebrew. כשאני מחפש אושר לעצמי, כפרט או כאומה, על חשבון אחרים שיסבלו בכך, במידה בלתי הכרחית, יש בזה אי צדק. השמחה אינה שלמה. כשאני מרחיק את האושר מאחרים, ובסופו של דבר מתרחק גם מעצמי, ולבסוף זה מתנקם בי. We need to think about world that everyone must think good thinking about other. In Tehillim we can find one sentence. A lot of uh, songs we sing with this or words, Mi ha'ish echafetz chayim ohev yamim lirot tov. Netzor leshon chamera, a lot of things. Who is a man, who is a person that like and will want to love his life? Ask David Amelech, King David, in Tehillim. And I want to tell you that every Saturday I pray and I said this pasuk, but I put the point not in the end of the sentence, but in the middle of sentence. Mi ha'ish echafetz chayim ohev yamim? This is the end of the question. And the answer, lir'ot tov. Mi ha'ish, who is the person? who want to live his life? This is a question. The answer, if you will see good, if you will see that the, all the people around you, maybe you look uh, with them, you look with not a uh, black eyeglasses, with a nice, with smile, maybe, if everyone can think about the best of his friend, so the, the next, uh, next step will be that everyone can see the best for, the, for his city, the best for his country, and because of that, the best for our world. I hope, I pray, 
and I want to do it. Okay, I want to thank Rabbi Lau. I want to tell you, by the way, I didn't invite him just because he's the chief rabbi. I just had the opportunity to listen to him in Bratislava was the conference that we had. And I, I, I decided then to invite him, regardless of the fact I didn't know whether he'll be chosen chief rabbi. Uh, he mentioned his esteemed father, Rabbi Israel Lau. We have in Hebrew, we have a, a maxim, Brakara de Abua, the son is the leg of his father, which means that the son follows his father and very well he follows him, not only by becoming chief rabbi, but I hope in one of our next conferences, we'll have Rabbi Israel Lau speak to us. I, I don't exaggerate when I say he's the best orator, not only in Israel, I think one of the best in the world. You'll agree with me. Um, and and, uh, and uh, uh, two more things. Uh, first of all, I have the feeling that you read my paper for tomorrow because you took away the Maimonides from me, but that's all right. I never had that such a distinguished introduction to my speech. So I forgive you about that. The second thing that uh, Rabbi Lau mentioned, and this is very important, we, we always say when somebody is killed in the battle or some, Hashem Yikom Damo, God will take revenge. And I always am faced with people saying, we are a bloody nation. You want revenge? And I said, oh, the contrary. It means that we don't take revenge. The God blessed he be. If he wants to take revenge, it's up to him. It's actually meaning we are not taking revenge. Uh, Rabbi, yeah. I want to add one point. I, uh, yes, we are running. <laughs> I was born in Tel Aviv, in a very warm home. And uh, all of us know that uh, my father was an orphan after the Holocaust. He arrived to Israel. He was eight years old, without father, without mother, without brother. And uh, even though he's very happy, person and uh, he said that he won why because he rebuilt himself here in Israel he has children he has grandchildren he has grand grandchildren and I don't want to tell you how much because he don't <laughs> he doesn't want to tell us because we pray and we're happy, this is the way to continue the life with happiness. And uh, after this month, because of that, I must run in uh, with healthy also. I want to tell you, by the way, I know also your father's uncle, where he grew up in Kiryat Motskin. That was one of the nicest services I ever attended. And my father, who was a Gabe, agreed with me. He picked up a few things from from uh, that rabbi, and I, I want to say a special thank you to Rabbi Lau. He always agrees when I invite him to come. This time, he really, his wife is pretty sick. She's much better now, and we all will pray each in the way, in his own way, for the speedy recovery of his wife. And may, may both of you be, be till 120, and you are always invited to Paris and to our conferences. Thanks a lot.